You have tuned in to Timber and Terra. I hope your reception is good, because today should be a fun-filled day, or episode, I should say. This is part six of a road build, which goes from the town road there, and will eventually head to the edge of the field where those few popple trees are, and you can see the mowed area. The dozer's probably about halfway there. So this episode is ditch and culverts. So I'm going to make a ditch where this uh, three foot uh, step is. The road width is where I want it, but I need now to cut the ditch. So what I need to figure out is the nature of the ditch. So over there, it's just going to be a ditch that I can mow up to the ditch and uh, slope back up where the road is. Over here, there's going to be too much of a drop from where the grass ends because I don't want to disturb anything more beyond that than I need to. So the dirt, the grass is going to be about three feet higher than the road. So in that case, what I'm going to do is uh, dig a ditch that'll sort of like a U-shaped with, um, you know, one leg of the U being lower than the other, and I'll line it with rock. But I need to make the transition, and I'm thinking the transition is going to be probably right here where the paint can is. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay that out. And for the ditch, it's going to be about eight feet, eight feet back. From the road so right about here and I'll just mark that with the uh, white paint and that's where I will dig the ditch the material I take out here is going to end up covering our first culvert which we'll install today as well and a little bit of road fill because now I need to make sure the road level is above the grass after I took the sod off I have a little bit of a channel So while the excavator's warming up, um, I want to locate where I'm going to put this first culvert because as soon as I start loading the trailer, I'm going to bring it down here and dump it. Um, it's, the, the method I'm going to use is very crude, but I think it'll be fine. To the left here, it slopes downward that way. To the right, it's sort of level, but I think it slopes this way. What I want to try to do is find out where where the dip is, where it's relatively level. I'll stick the inlet there and the outlet. Uh, I may not go exactly 90 degrees because it'd be nice to have it sort of exit where the, the low spot is, but it's not as critical on the outlet side. So the other thing I do before I uh, put the culvert in is I'm going to bring the excavator down here, uh, just dig a little, I don't know what you want to call it, a basin if you will, inlet basin. Um, I'll worry about fine tuning it later with rock or whatever it needs to be, but um, because obviously the inlet needs to be a bit further out beyond the edge of the road.
gonna start uh, basically extending this ditch and then uh, when I get beyond where that uh, dirt really is uh, sort of up there and level and intact is where I'll um, start really uh, making uh, the little u-shaped ditch I've um, I've got it set up this way because uh, you know probably in one uh, one spot I'm gonna be able to fill this trailer this trailer fits uh, four to five yards <clears throat> so I think that'll be fine they'll have to move over every time and having the blade there to pick up all the material is nice uh, and I don't uh, you know pull the material into the side of the track so that's the reason I set up this way realize I'm gonna have to kitty corner and scoot over uh, probably every load or so So I moved the excavator out of the way just so I have a straight shot. I'm just going to back down to where the culvert's going to be. I did not uh, fill it completely up. Um, I'm, the road I think will be fine, but what has been a limiting factor once is I, I loaded this to the tilt once with some uh, gravel and it did not have enough power to dump. I had to actually shovel some from here. So if it dumps easy enough, then I'll fill the others a lot more. So we'll dump the first one and see how it goes.
dump string. So it is a little bit soft here, not so much down there. I didn't sink in at all, but you can see here, I sunk in probably six or eight inches. And here where the tractor sits is really soft. I didn't notice that with the, either the dozer or the excavator, just because they're tracked. But you can see the ruts in here. Even when I delivered the, the culverts on the last video with my pickup truck, I didn't sink in that much. A little bit, it was noticeable. But yeah, with the extra weight here and wheels, so a lot of that material that's underneath there is still a little wet so it'll firm up eventually it might take weeks maybe months before that happens but it'll be fine eventually all right let's continue on so this is my uh my white mark start so i'm going to go from sort of sloping it down to sort of making a big u as uh as the plan
So that should stay put so when I uh, dump some more material on top of it, it shouldn't move at all. I have about a, a two inch slope on four feet, so about a, a half inch per foot, which is, which is fine, I think. Let's go load up another one. Thank you. 
So the ditch is dug basically to where the trailer is and I've uh, I decided to strip all the topsoil about six to eight feet on this side but I'm going to change uh, st strategies or the look of the ditch um, from that big swale as um, the ground here gets more level with the road it's just going to be a, a, a gentle slope into the edge of the road and then the, the bank of the road will be up and that'll be the ditch. So as a result of that I'm almost all the way down here to the culverts. So since I'm down here, I'll spread these two loads out and then I'll start uh, removing a little bit of the, uh, the clay here uh, so that uh, when I put the topsoil back on, the grass will be below the road level. And I'm probably going to have another four to six inches of gravel on top of this road as well. So it doesn't have to be too much below the existing road level to, to work as a ditch. Interesting, these, even these uh, two, two loads here, the difference in color. This is sort of a black, dark gray, and this is a light brown. Almost gravelly, just a lot of little rocks, which is not typical. I don't think there's a bunch of little rocks in here, nearly as much as that stuff. So what I'm going to do here, because this is the, the low point, or I'm going to make it the low point if it's not, but I think it is, is uh, my strategy will be a little bit different here. So now, uh, since I'm so close, and particularly since I still need a little bit of fill here on the edge of the road, is uh, just dig out the swale and just uh, dump it on the road, and then I'll spread it with the, the blade. But before I go too far, I think I want to mark the edge of the road, because you're in the excavator, you don't sort of have that... Uh, big picture view and it's easy for me to go too far off one way or the other and yeah so let's mark out the road and we'll continue on i still have this load to dump sort of abandon it probably only has like one or two buckets to fill it up but <laughs> before i started uh, before i needed to start stripping the topsoil again then i just kept going so here's sort of a uh a recap What's been done so far, you can see the original lay of the, the land and the bit of a swale. Uh, the bottom of this to the, the base of the road is probably 8 inches, maybe 10 inches. 
I'll clean this up a bit. Uh, this is a little bit of where that was a bit soft, you know, with the, the tires sort of pumping. No liquids coming out, which is nice, but it's soft underneath. Uh, so this area here is um, going to need a little bit of touching up. This, I think, is the sort of dividing line. Uh, from this point to the left will go to the road culvert, and from this point to the right will go to the culvert that we just put in. I've not put a level on here, so I should verify that, but that's my guess. So my eyes deceived me. I put my trusty level on, and basically from this point that way, it falls that way. Interesting. Does not look that way. I know everything looks uphill or downhill on camera. So I'm guessing from here on down, it'll head that way. So let's continue uh, digging out this portion of the ditch from the bottom up to the top, and then we'll dump our load of fill. I had a question um, earlier on, you know, when do you decide to trailer something or and when do you decide to push it with, with the dozer when you're moving dirt? I guess the answer is it depends. Um, for me, I said I, don't even, I haven't even started the dozer yet. Uh, but this seems to be a good point where I'm just going to um, push this uh, with the excavator because I think I have enough fill on this side of the culvert. So for me to push it, even with the bulldozer sort of around this corner over the culvert, uh, to me it's, you can't really slop push it, so you're going to have stuff fall off the edge of the blade into the ditch potentially, or one side or the other. So what I'm going to do is, is flatten this out, see what it looks like, and then I will likely trail the rest of this fill uh, to the other side of the culvert, which is between the culvert and the dozer is where I need to fill in now.
So that part of the road I think is shaping up nicely. There's three loads here. So three loads is about the same as a 10 wheeler. So about 14 to 15 yards. That's my bend in my experience anyhow. This stuff, uh, my experience and here's no different. It, it packs extremely well. I mean, without doing lifts and compacting and anything like that, you just run over it and granted these are flotation tires and stuff like that, but there is absolutely no indent, slight indent there. Anyhow, very pleased with it. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll still settle a little bit over time, but yeah, I don't want to drive over this again with the trailer. So now it's time to spread it and uh, excavate is really slow and it's up there. So I guess it's time to fire up the dozer. Well, I thought this last little bit I'd give it a try to just dump the stuff in the road and push it with the dozer. I do have that corner to go around, but it's not that far and it's not that much material. Um, what I do need to figure out is how to finish this ditch up. Uh, what I've found placing my four foot level here and there is from where I'm standing to maybe the blade of the dozer is pretty much level. Interestingly enough, it doesn't really shoot downhill to any significant amount until we make the corner. So, um, so I don't know if I should try to use the dozer, you know, with the tilt to try to, to make this uh, more even. Um, what I think I will do actually is maybe straddle this a little bit with the excavator and make a smoother uh, base to it and uh, again just dump it in the road and take care of the material from there and some areas i know it's not uh, didn't didn't go into the road as much as i wanted to i don't have the eight feet so let's uh, get this out of the way and go from there
So as you can tell, I did decide to run the corner of the dozer blade down the ditch. I think more just so I can put a level on it and, and find out exactly where my fall is. More so than that's going to be the finished product, although it doesn't look bad. So, to my surprise, all the way from where the bulldozer sets, which is the, basically the beginning of the curve, all the way down there is downhill. Everywhere I put the level, it was pointing downhill that way. So. Anyhow, my eyes are deceiving me. That's what it is, but from here down, even my eyes can tell that is downhill. And maybe you can even tell that on the camera, I'm not sure. Um, the issue I have now, and this is probably a good time to cut this episode and uh, refresh for the next one, is I need more dirt. And uh, I don't have any more ditches to dig, so I can't get any more dirt from there. In uh, hindsight, if I had it to do over again, I think I would lower that a bit more. All that would mean over here, what I did is I did it so the outlet was on the surface of the grass. But even if I was to, to dig out, um, there's plenty of fall down there. Even if I was to dig out a, a dissipator or whatever, uh, I don't think it would be the end of the world. I should have done that. That would have eliminated a lot of this extra fill. It's not bad though, because it does go downhill as it curves from the dozer and the way it was before I started putting fill in, I think it was is too steep, you know, to have a corner and a downgrade at the same time. This is a northern climate, so we get winter. Uh, that might not be the best idea. So, basically I need to uh, reduce that fall a little bit and I don't need to go all the way up to the surface of the grass but darn near it because I still have however many inches of gravel I'm going to put on top. So that'll be the start of the next episode and then move on to this culvert. The bigger culvert over there, um, I probably will get some fill from that little hump there because I'm going to soften that out a bit. But for now, I think this is a good place to stop. Thanks for watching part six. Stay tuned for part seven. I appreciate you watching. Thank you.